Hey folks, Technivers here. Today we are going to take a look at this fantastic yellow PETG from Kodak. Here it is. Alright, so let's discuss some of the things that I've been able to print with the Kodak PETG. I've gotten some very lovely models with this stuff. So um, this is a vase I did. This was actually out of a 0.6 millimeter nozzle. And as you can see, it doesn't flex nearly as much as if you were to do it out of a standard 0.4. You can go thicker than that and get more rigidity, but uh, this came out really, really nice. Get a nice close up here. A couple little lines in there where my flow wasn't perfectly even, but this was one of the first models I printed and I was still adjusting the speed and temperature. So I'm very, very happy with the way this turned out. And let's see what else we got. As far as precision printing goes, um, these are micro SD cards. This is a micro SD card holder. It's got a fair number of slots in there. I believe there are 20 altogether. And it is also threaded so you can seal it. So this uh, was printed with tree support to help support those threads a little bit. But once it was cleaned up, it is super smooth and accurate. Screws right on, no issues whatsoever. So as far as accuracy goes, this stuff is very, very nice. Uh, another model I have here, you can see the Hulk. I have a couple of issues here on the fingers, if we get a little bit closer, and that is due to the lack of dense enough support underneath the hands. Once that worked itself out, the arms came out pretty well, and the rest of the body where it's well supported is fantastic. I like this detail work here in the abdomen you can see a really, really nice shell work on here. Uh, this was another miniature that I had tried. Now I did this when I still had the 0.6 millimeter nozzle on. This is a chest piece from the Egypt chest set. And if you look closely at the ears, you can see a little blobbing. And that is due to trying to print these fine details or sometimes on top of support with a larger nozzle size. So can easily be taken care of by reducing the size of my nozzle. One of the other ones we have here is a chest piece from my chest set. This is the night. This is a simple one. I did try to clean this one up a little bit so it looks a little rough because it has been sanded and not polished, but uh, came out very, very nice as well. You can see the undercuts there on that overhang. There was tree support in there as well, and it came out pretty clean. Uh, I did a video a while back about practical prints and this was one of them. It's going to be a new series I'm doing about printing things that are actually useful. These are shelf clips for holding a shelf. They came out really nice. I have them installed in my kitchen cupboard. I printed an extra set to show you guys. And one of the interesting things about this guy is to me it looks almost like a resin quality print. It is, it's gorgeous. So I really have the temperature and speed settings dialed in for those guys. And the last thing I want to show you is this guy here. Now this is a just a knockup model I made out of basic shapes in Fusion 360 because I was practicing with the slicing capabilities of Fusion 360. Uh, so this is sliced and printed from Fusion 360's G-code. If you look closely, you can see the flower infill pattern in there. Very gorgeous, but that came out really nice as well. I will say with the PETG coming out of Fusion 360, this stuff, I did increase the top and bottom shell layers by one in order to get a little bit smoother look. Other than that, it was just a straight Ender 3 PLA profile that I upped the temperature on and turned off the fan. So this is a really, really nice collection of stuff. I have enjoyed thoroughly printing with this. They also sent me some purple and I will get to the review of that shortly. For now, I'm gonna have to give this guy another five out of five. Now, I will tell you, last time I talked to the guy who, the rep who sent me this, he told me, you know, don't be afraid to be a little critical. Honestly, I have no critiques to give them. This was, it was plug and play. I put it right in my machine. Uh, I went right to PETG temperatures and started printing. I did slow my speed down a little bit, but that's adjustable depending on what I'm printing with. So it was, it was simple, ready to go. And you have this gorgeous look. So no complaints, easy to use. I had really good luck with my adhesion and all of that. So yeah, definitely give it a shot. If you give it a chance to try the PETG from Kodak guys, this is definitely worth taking a crack at it and uh, you know, buying some, throwing it on your 3D printer and seeing what you come up with because I've been very happy with the results so far. 
And that's basically just the gist of it. You guys are awesome for sticking around this long. Don't forget to hit that like button down below and subscribe to my channel for future videos. Uh, I'm going to leave you now with a couple of shots of the stuff that I printed, printing on my Ander 3. As always, this channel is brought to you by the Spine Patreon supporters. If you'd like to support the channel on Patreon, head over to www.patreon.com slash technivorous. That's going to be it for this video. As always, I am Technivorous, and thanks for watching. Don't forget to check out our main channel page where we do a free giveaway for our subscribers every month. So far, we've given away things like a Capricorn PTFE tubing kit and spools of filament. So the giveaway videos are always pinned to our main channel page. So all you have to do is subscribe and leave a comment on the giveaway video for the current contest. Feel free to check out this video right here. YouTube picked it from my content just for you. And if you haven't already, you can hit the subscribe button right here. So what are you waiting for? Become a Technivore now. Thanks again. Technivorous out.